My name is Gary. I recently found out that a big moment in my life was captured for one second on this film from 1971 by Jonas Makis. It's at the very end. So in the meantime, let me tell you my story. The story of my fab weekend with John and Yoko and a bunch of other icons of music and culture from the 60s and early 70s. I was 18, hadn't been drafted yet, and was on my first trip home for my freshman year at college, home of Syracuse, New York, where this film was made. Syracuse was a dying Rust Belt city, but it had a brand spanking new modern art museum, the Everson, which you're looking at now. This is where Yoko decided to have her first solo art show called This Is Not Here. Apple Records apparently paid for a lot of the expenses, including flying in some of these famous folks. And Paul apparently wasn't happy about it. The Beatles have broken up by now, but there are always rumors they get back together, including this weekend in Syracuse. That's Phil Spector. He uh, took over from George Martin, I think, for Let It Be and produced it and was producing John's music at the time. I like the Beatles, especially John Lennon, because he seemed like the hard edge of the band. But I was no Beatle maniac. That was my sister Gail's job and my cousin Donna's. I stopped by the hotel that night where John was staying. Half the city was down there, including most of my friends, everyone looking for a glimpse. It turns out one of my friends, Dave, had recently had a run-in with the law and he made amends and was chatting amiably with the Captain Delaney of the Syracuse Police Department. Turns out Captain Delaney is the go-to guy for celebrity security in Syracuse and he was in charge of the small army of Syracuse police handling the event. He regaled us with stories about celebrities, particularly the one about Elizabeth Taylor stands out in my mind. But I digress. After a while, Captain Delaney looked at me and Dave and said, I need a couple long hairs to work with security this weekend. Can you guys uh, help out? Next thing you know, I'm hanging strange objects at the Everson Museum while John and Yoko are floating around. At one point, John was very close to me for the first time. Someone asked him where Yoko was, and the first words I ever heard him say were, she's running around like a chicken with her head cut off. Now that's something my Italian relatives would say. And then that phrase and that whole moment struck me as so incongruous that I couldn't help but crack up. By the way, that date was wrong. It's actually 1971. At that point, I think I had gained some trust from John because he asked me to run some errands for him and I ended up being his gopher for the rest of the afternoon. In fact, to such an extent that some people got jealous. One official at the museum took me aside and said, you think you're getting something together, but you're not. Yeah, whatever. I was too innocent to worry about court intrigue, and there was lots of that. Late in the afternoon, John took me aside and almost in a hush-hush way said, you're a musician, right? I said yes, wasn't sure how he knew. My friends in there are having a party tonight. Can you get some guitars? I said, sure, how many? As many as you can get, he said. So I left the hotel and I went home, grabbed my guitars, called a couple friends, and I showed up at the hotel probably around seven with four guitars. Now this was Saturday night, and it seemed like the whole city was now surrounding the hotel. I had no pass, no backstage tags, nothing. But somehow the police seemed to know I was coming. They parted the crowd and the crowd stared, very uncomfortable actually, at me with four guitars and Rumors spread that the Beatles were reunited. Upstairs in the hotel, the halls were filled with police and more people, and I was ushered down to the end where John's suite was. I went in and he said, hey, it's the guitar man. He was smiling, he came over and put his arm around me. I can't remember what I said. There was his birthday cake. He was 31 years old that day. We got the guitars out and I hung around and tuned them up like a good roadie. People wandered in. Finally, I figured it was my time to leave and I got up to walk out and John said, no, hey, stay. The room filled up. Captain Blaney said to John, all set. There was a nod, the door shut, and stuff started to happen. The first music in the room was actually John and I in the middle right where you see him sitting now. And I just decided to play. I played some prog rock, progressive rock riff from Yes or McDowell and Giles. And after a 
couple minutes, John, who's sitting two feet in front of me, quietly says, why don't you play something I know so I can play along? Pretty funny, huh? So I think I played You Can't Do That or something like it. We jammed for a few more minutes as others joined in. And then there was a momentary break, which ended with John belted out a poignant, Don't let me down! And he kind of took over. None of this is on the film, which is too bad. Pretty soon we're all playing Yellow Submarine, Ringo's pounding on the waste baskets and singing. It sounded great. Phil Spector slid into center stage and kind of took over playing 50s style hits. It's funny to be sitting across from a convicted murderer, a murder victim, when I look back at this moment. My one second of fame is coming up in the lower left hand corner. I'm uh, got long hair and a funny sweater on. There it is. That's it. John Lennon was very good to me. He gave me this memory. It's actually my last childhood memory. A few days later, I got a check from the Syracuse Police Department for 14 bucks. <laughs>